Hello there and welcome. This is Santi. Welcome back. If not, welcome for the first time. I am going to be showing you a really cool plugin for Obsidian that I'm super excited to share with you because I think it's amazing. This is at the time of recording this. Uh, this only came out a couple of days ago, so it's really, really cool. And it's called No Tweet, right? And you're going to be able to find this, of course, in the community plugins. You can browse and then you can search No Tweet right there, right? So what it allows you to do is it lets you post uh, Twitter, <laughs> sorry, it lets you post tweets from inside Markdown files. So from your notes in Obsidian, you can share tweets and it's really cool. So I want to first show you how it works and then I'm going to walk you through how to set it up, which I understand might be a little bit tricky, especially if you're a beginner to these things and, you know, APIs and getting like this code access and all this stuff is going to be a bit tricky. So I'm going to walk you through it and hopefully I'll make it simple enough. But first, let me show you how it works because it's super cool. All right, so in here I have uh, just a quote that I have by one of my favorite philosophers, Marcus Aurelius, and this quote is amazing, so I want to share it in Twitter. Now, because I have everything, everything already set up in the plugin, all I need to do is select what I want to post as a tweet, and then I'm going to do Ctrl P to open the command palette. I'm just going to search for tweet, and here I have two options. The first one is post selected as tweet, which I'm going to do right now, and check this out. I'm just going to click on it, and it says your tweet is live. So let's open that and it sends me straight to the Twitter post, right? Which is amazing, it's already been posted. And yeah, it's just super cool because it was so easy. I can organize the things that I want to post from tweet, uh, from Obsidian and they're gonna go straight into Twitter, which I think is super cool. Now you can also do um, threads, okay? So let me show you how that works. So here back in Obsidian, what's really cool is that you can also set tags so that in here it automatically tags as Twitter posted, which is something I I determine, which I'm going to show you how to do, right? Now, let's explore how to how to post a Twitter thread. So it works like this. Let me just open a new file. All right, so now in here I put together a, a Twitter thread, a tweet thread. <laughs> I always get confused with how Twitter calls things. Either way, tweet. All right, you get the point. Either way, so here we start with a thread start and thread end. And a thread is just a sequence of tweets that are just gonna be displayed in that order. So in here I have another quote by Marcus Aurelius, which is a bit longer. And all we need to do in here is put these three dashes to divide where we want one tweet to end and the next one to begin, all in a sequence, right? So now if we just open the command palette with Ctrl P in my case, and I search for tweet again, we can post file as thread, okay? That's what we need to do when we want to post a thread. So I'm gonna click on that and there we go. So let's open that up. Actually, you can see it's three different links. So we're just gonna open the first one. And there we go, as you can see, it works. Here's the beginning of the quote, and then it follows it like that until the end. So it seems to be working great. Now with all of that, I'm gonna show you how to set this up, how to get it working. And yeah, as you can see, there's also like the really cool added, added thing about like the tag being posted right next to the tweet. So that way you can keep track of which ones have been posted already and which ones haven't yet. So yeah, with that said, let's get into how to set this up. So right now I'm gonna go into the community plugins right here. I'm gonna go browse and in my case I have it here, but if not, you can of course just search for it and we're gonna open the GitHub page where, which is where the instructions are, okay? So I'm gonna open that up. So of course, huge shout out to the creator of this amazing plugin. And in here, there's some, you know, some clear instructions. I understand it's going to be a bit tricky if you are not familiar with, if you don't consider yourself tech savvy and all this stuff. So I'm just going to walk you through it step by step. And in here, there's a manual installation process, which you do not need to follow. Now the plugin is available from the, from the, within Obsidian. So all you need to do is search for it, install it like you would a normal plugin, which is just by clicking here. In my case, because it's already installed, it will show installed for you. And in my case, it's just update, but same idea, all right? So now what you need to do is you need to go here. So I'm gonna walk you through the process right now. When you click in here, you need to kind of fill up some form, some information. So I'm gonna walk you through it right now. All right, so we're gonna click in this link right here. We're gonna open that. And now you need to create a new app. It says no apps yet. So what you need to do is just click on this button right here. You're gonna apply, right? And now in here, you have to fill up some things. I'm gonna put it like a hobbyist and exploring the API. I recommend you do the same because that worked for me. And then you just click next after filling some personal information. And then you write in your words, what is it that you want to get out of this? You know, you just gotta explain. So I basically just explain 
uh, that I'm trying to use this Obsidian app. Uh, you know, it's just for people in Twitter to review it. So if you want, feel free to pause and check what I wrote. But if not, just feel free to, to write whatever you think makes sense for you. So here's all the information that I filled in. And yeah, with that, now you can just simply click next. And that should take you to the next page where there's the terms of agreement, you know, and you have to click submit application in order after you agree with the terms. And now you have a successful thing. And now it's going to be sending a, an email to your, you know, a verification code to your email, which you just have to go through and, you know, accept. So here's your email, you confirm your thing, and then you're back here where you can finally start. Okay. Oops, wrong page. <laughs> Ignore this. this. is just my files. So, okay. Now we go back here and I already created um, this thing. So this might look slightly different for you, but you still have access to a button in here that says create app or create first app, something like that. So what you need to do is of course you click in there and now you name it whatever you want, which can be something like no tweet, which is the name of the, um, of the plugin. I'm just going to call it maybe demo. Maybe demo is fine because that's what it is for now. I already have my original one. So now complete. Now in this page, you'll have access to the code. Now, of course, this is private, so don't do what I'm doing and record your screen to the internet. Uh, I'm going to delete this because it's not the one that I'm going to use. So even if you try to copy this, it's not going to work. It's going to be deleted soon. So don't even try that stuff. <laughs> and uh, Okay, so you're going to have the API key, which I recommend you copy, place it somewhere safe. And then API secret key, you're going to copy that one as well. Those are going to be the ones that we need. And then you can actually just start going ahead and copy this and put it where it goes, right? So when you go to, after you've installed the plugin, right? Make sure that is activated. So if you scroll down to community plugins, you should make sure this is gonna be off by default like that. So make sure to turn that on. And now you're gonna have access to this little setting right here, no tweet, right? So API, we're gonna paste that. API secret, we're gonna copy that, paste it here. And now we're also looking for access token token and access token secret, right? Which you cannot see in here. Now, another thing to keep in mind is if you, for any reason, like in here, it says, this is going to be displaying for a second and then it's going to disappear, meaning that you can gen regenerate it. So in case that happens to you, say you refresh it by accident or something, it's going to go away. And now, as you can see in here, we have the demo that we're working with. You can simply go to, let me just check found it here is so you go to projects apps you can go to overview and in this case we got demo in here and you can just click on this key right here and in in here you can regenerate in case for some reason you refresh the page and you lost the api and the secret api uh just in case that's kind of important now another thing that we need to do is we go we're going to go back right now again to overview we're going to go to the one that we're working with which is a demo and we're going to configure it in here right now this is very important in the instructions, which I highly recommend you check this out in case you need more guidance. Uh, in here, it says that you're going to need to, let me find it here. Okay. Yeah. Make sure it's read and write. Otherwise you can't tweet. Okay. So we need to change that permission. If we go back here, you can see that now we have a permission. We're going to edit that and we're going to put read and write. Okay. We're going to save that. We're going to agree. And now you have that permission to read and write. Now, if we go into overview again. So click here in overview, find the one that you're doing. You probably have just one. Uh, right now I have two. So don't be confused by this. This is the one that I'm currently using. This is the one for the demo. And in here, you're going to click on the keys right here. All right. And now you'll see that we already have the API key and the secret one, right? Which we already copied into our settings right here. Now you can do this straight away or you can save it somewhere safe and then you can put all the ones that you need is really up to you, whatever you feel it's safer. And now what we need to do is we also need to get the access token and the access token secret. Okay. So in that case, we're going to do the access token and ac access token secret. We're going to generate and this is going to get the codes that we need. Okay. Access token. We're going to copy it. We're going to put it in here and now access token secret. We're going to copy that as well. And we're going to paste it here. And with that, we are done. You can close this now. We're all good. And everything should now work. Now, of course, I added this, uh, which is our nice little, you know, feature to make sure that after you post, like I showed you at the beginning, you can make sure to, to have like a tag in there 
just for you to keep track of which ones, which tweets have been posted, and then you can organize things however you want. Again, don't copy these codes. I'm gonna delete them so they're not gonna work. So don't waste your time. You just have to follow the steps like I showed you, and now everything should just work. So let's just run a final test. All right, so here I have another tweet just to test that everything works, and we're gonna go Command P for the command palette. We're gonna go Tweet and Pose selected as Tweet, right? We click on that, and now it should work. As you can see, we can click on the link and that is gonna open up in a browser. There we go, link should be working all right. And we do a perfect segue towards my Obsidian online course, which I encourage you to check out. It's the best way you can support this channel. And yeah, I just really hope you enjoy this video. Again, remember that it's really cool how the Twitter, you know, after you posted it, the tag that we set up on our settings is going to be working in here, which is awesome, right? So everything should be working now. I hope you enjoyed this. And thanks again to the creator of this amazing plugin. It's people like him that allows the community of Obsidian and the application to keep growing and expand these boundaries and what is what is able to do. So huge shout out. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video again. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.